You see that frame right back there? The one with the green and the red on it? That's called a DJI Flame Wheel 450. And that particular model of quad is what spurred Chris LaRue to create Armitan. I will let him tell the story for you, and it's a pretty good one. Bye. Let's turn the conversation a little bit. Um, tell me about you know your origin story, the origin of Armaton. Um, how did you end up where you are now? Started at Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. I uh, I was living in Taiwan at the time, where Armaton mm -hmm. is based, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to Toys R Us because uh, I wanted to buy a gift. For, mm -hmm. for, for a kid and then I spotted this little helicopter uh, it's coaxial um, yeah. infrared infrared oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. controller and I was like well, it's not expensive yeah, I'll buy this try this and try to have right. fun with this and I ended up bringing it back three times because the tail rotor kept burning <laughs> <laughs> And eventually, I moved on to CP helis, uh -huh. uh, and then uh, yeah, end up uh, I ended up a decently good pilot, and I, mm -hmm. I I like to make videos on YouTube and I share them on RC groups. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I was offered uh, from a couple companies in Hong Kong and China mm -hmm. to actually do reviews for these helicopters. Sure, essentially put them on a bench, talk about them, and then take them out to the field, fly down, I put a mm -hmm. camera on my head. Yeah. And eventually, uh, myrcmart.com, mm -hmm. uh, they contacted me and they asked me if I was keen to build a quadcopter mm -hmm. and uh, film the process mm -hmm. to help people, essentially, because that's a long time ago, back when if you wanted to build one, there was no information. Right. There was no information anywhere. You couldn't even find information on Google uh, on how to build a wire harness for your ESCs back then. Right. And so I ended up trying, asking people, essentially, how, how, how am I supposed to build this? And one guy from the U.S. drew, like, hand-drawn hand <laughs> diagrams for me and right. how I would put the ESCs together and build my own power harness and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I agreed. I built it. I was successful. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see these videos still today. They're still on their website. Yeah. Um, and I was back in 2000, uh, maybe late 2010, early 2011. Wow. And at that point, I got the bug, yeah, because <clears throat> uh -huh. flying helis at the end when, of my, I guess, my heli days, I was uh, getting into flying 3D, mm -hmm. but I, was, I wasn't that good at that. I was a very yeah. good line of sight pilot as long as I didn't go inverted. Once right. I started trying to go inverted, that's when... That's mm -hmm. when the bank felt it a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, no, you crash helis, they don't oh, usually yeah. do. Like, yeah, you crash a heli, it means back to the bench. Now you got to have spare parts, you need to fix yeah. it. Yeah. Or it has a quad. I mean, it will take a, you know, a certain amount of abuse compared to a helicopter, and you can mm -hmm. still go back and fly with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from there, that, that's, that's where it started. Yeah. Um, yeah, at the time I was flying a DJI F330. Mm -hmm. It's uh, basically a plastic frame with a distribution board in the middle. That's the that's the 450. Where that's it? That's, that's it right there. That's, that's the, yeah. That's what I built for my RC Mark first okay. model. Yeah, 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 yeah. That model there, and uh, yeah, and the arms kept breaking. Yes. It's, that. Uh, anytime it, you touch it, the ground, <laughs> they break. Yeah. yeah. And I got tired of waiting for parts and having to spend money on parts. And mm -hmm. So I went to uh, recycling stations. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, you recycle yeah. metal, you recycle everything. Mm -hmm. And I looked for all kinds of different materials I could use to build build my own frame, essentially, mm -hmm. that would stand more abuse. I tried everything from wood to stainless steel to aluminum. And eventually, I found this nice material. It was like these flat, sort of flat rectangular tubes of alumi. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that's when the company was born to an extent because mm -hmm. I posted 
I posted uh, my build, my almost scratch build on RC Groups, mm-hmm. and guys wanted to buy one, right? And at mm-hmm. the time, I was, I was like, okay, well, I suppose I can make more. Mm-hmm. And the way I operated at the time is that um, I would start a trade on RC Groups, and you could, you can still find them today. Mm-hmm. Where I use RC Groups as an online selling platform, essentially, because like <laughs> the first post of the thread will have a list of like 60, 70 people. Right. And I will go back and edit that post and add uh, paid or shipped or, right. you know, to right. update yeah. that. Yeah. And the way it worked is I would make a video for them mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. and show it to them, take it out, fly it. Mm-hmm. And only if they liked the video, they would then send me payment, mm-hmm. and I would ship it to them. And that's how it started. Eventually, I become too busy doing that on RC Groups. I had to open an online store, a proper online store. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that really helped, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, got me even busier. And then from there, that there's, I guess you could say, two more stepping stones from there where first one is where I actually, instead of drilling, cutting, and doing all the metal parts in my shop by myself, mm-hmm. I went back to the CNC factory in Taiwan, mm-hmm. uh, actually cut professional-looking aluminum arms and center right. plates. Mm-hmm. And that, from there, like you could say that Armatan really took off. Yeah. And then the next stepping stone from there is once we moved away from aluminum and started mm-hmm. using fiber. And that was sort of like, well, and from there... And they got even busier, and that's yeah. where that's when the lifetime warranty started. Because mm-hmm. at the time, the models I was making in carbon, it just wouldn't break. They were line mm-hmm. of sight model, not FPV. That's before FPV. Yeah. Well, I mean, they were guys doing FPV back then, but it was really not uh, mm-hmm. mainstream yet. Mm-hmm. And you know, we're talking 22, 23 millimeter wide arms, four millimeter right. tick. Right. Yeah. It just wouldn't break. They wouldn't break. You could yeah. slam these things; they wouldn't break. So I decided to. Just make it lifetime warranty, and mm-hmm. we just about warrantied none of these. Mm-hmm. It just, it just, yeah. And so yeah. that I guess that's the origin of Armatan. That is, uh, that's it's, it, that's pretty cool. You know, it's interesting. You talk about the the thickness of the was it was it the fiber or was it the aluminum? Uh, the lifetime warranty started at once we were using fiber, carbon okay. fiber. Um, so the aluminum, we would not warranty it, but it still did well because people knew that in most crashes, you mm-hmm. would just bend it back. <laughs> right. Just bend the arm back, yeah. go back to fly, yeah? yeah? It was still better than, say, the plastic frames that would break right. yeah, out. Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah I, I spoke with um, Jet uh, uh, Jordan Temkin, and um, he was mentioning you know, that he's got a little nascent um, uh, quad built or uh, frame company and uh, one of the things he mentioned was yeah he's like I've got this one quad it's like seven millimeters thick and you know he was saying how it was just for him it was a test rig for DRL Um, he wanted he needed something heavy and so he was like sure cut me a seven millimeter uh, seven millimeter uh, frame and um, he goes I I I would beat the hell out of it and it didn't break. And, um, then, then folks over for him were like, Hey, can, can I get all that? So it's, it's very interesting. Once you start building something that's durable and once you start building something that like for you, that has the, the, the warranty, um, I, I think it definitely catches on. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, yeah, it's, it, it took years. It took years before right. other companies uh, kind of said, well, maybe we need to try the lifetime warranty as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some of them, it worked. Some of them, it didn't work. Yeah. I know that there's a company in Australia, now. I'm sure you're well familiar with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're trying that at the moment. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not lifetime, however. It's for two years. Right. Give yeah. a two-year warranty. Yeah. Uh, so good for them for, for trying that. I guess they'll... They, they'll learn for themselves how that all works out uh, mm-hmm. over time, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think they'll do well, though. I think they'll do well. And uh, there's also another company based in the U.S., which, uh, you know, I don't want to start an argument. I won't name them or 
hear my complaints about them, but they've been saying that they have lifetime warranty forever now. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's not because you have to pay for your replacement. So how is it mm -hmm. warranty if you have to pay for it? You charge $5 for an arm. They ch you charge uh, 15 to $20 for a main plate. Then they call that mm -hmm. warranty. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's still, despite that, it took, we, we were doing a lifetime warranty for a number of years before anyone else sort of. Mm -hmm. I think what happened is they looked at our success. We're doing well on the market. We had a lot of market shares. And they figured, well, maybe we can try, you know, do something similar to that. Being an original manufacturer of frames has really worked out for Armitan. And they have come a long way since 2010, 2011 to where they are now. In our next episode, Chris and I talk a lot about cloning. What does cloning entail for the industry? Is it really evil? How does he approach it philosophically? Uh, you know, over the years, he has been very vehement against it, and maybe that position is changing for him. Um, I hope that you look forward to and enjoy that episode. And uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to my patrons. Um, thank you to them. They're awesome. I really enjoy it. If you become a patron, uh, you get a podcast version of all of these at one drop on the day that the first video drops. Um, so if you're looking for a podcast version, uh, the base cost for the podcast version is $3 a month. It's not a lot, but... Um, I appreciate my patrons. I appreciate the way they support me. I thank them for the community. And I'm also thinking about adding in new perks, maybe like a Facebook group, something like that, just for patrons only. Um, still thinking it out, but we'll see what happens. Uh, anyways, I hope that you guys had a, a great day, and I hope that you look forward to the next episode. Bye.